Welcome to the African History Network show. It is Monday, October 11th, 2021, and we are live. Hope everybody's doing well today. It's been an extremely busy day. We had a great show uh, yesterday on Sunday. Um, we did two, we do two hours on Sunday. So a lot of people have been watching the rebroadcast of Sunday show. We talked about Dave Chappelle and the um, backlash from his closer Netflix special. We talked about some other topics as well. Henrietta Lacks, uh, attorney Fred Gray, legendary civil rights attorney Fred Gray. So on today's show, um, today is Indigenous Peoples Day. We know Joe Biden's uh, issued a proclamation uh, announcing that October 11th is Indigenous Peoples Day, a proclamation on Indigenous Peoples Day 2021. It was actually issued October 8th, but it's for Monday, October 11th. We know many cities and states over the past few years have been uh, more and more have been celebrating uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, we know this goes back to uh, 1991. It's believed that South Dakota was the first to uh, celebrate uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. But uh, since 1991, dozens of cities, several universities and a growing number of states have adopted uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. A holiday that celebrates the history and contributions of Native Americans. Now, it's also important to note that there were African people in the Americas for tens of thousands of years as well. There were African people in the Americas for tens of thousands of years also. And we'll talk about that some uh, as well. We'll share a clip from my friend, Dr. David M. Hotep, author of the book, The First Americans Were Africans, uh, documented evidence. So we'll talk about that as well. We'll talk about, uh, we'll, we'll deal some with the African presence in the Americas also. So I've been reading a number of different articles today um, about uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. And, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the good things about this is that it gives people a history lesson because Americans are very ignorant of history. Americans are very ignorant of history. And I was listening to some radio shows today. I was listening to Reverend Al Sharpton's show today. Um, and yeah, people really need a history lesson because um, when you talk about Indigenous Peoples Day, that includes African Americans. The, the Khoisan have the oldest DNA on the planet. The Khoisan were here in this land we call the United States of America going back at least 51,700 years ago. So um, I heard some people say, oh, well, what about the Moors? Things like the Moors are African people. The Moors are African people. But the Khoisan were here in this land that we call in, in, in the territory we call South Carolina going back at least 51,700 years ago. OK, this is even before uh the more the people who are called the moors were called the moors who are african people coming from north africa some of them coming from west africa so we have to understand we have to understand this history dr jose pimenta bay who has a good essay in the book uh golden age of the moor which is edited by dr ivan van sertima dr jose pimenta bay says um if you don't know the names that your people have had throughout history, you won't know how to find yourself in history. If you don't know the names that your people have had throughout history, you won't know how to find yourself in history. OK, so we'll deal with some of this history today. Also, we'll talk about uh, Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle is getting support from Netflix. OK, Dave Chappelle is getting support from Netflix and Netflix is saying that they're not going to uh pull his special uh the closer behind backlash from lgbtq um organizations like glad and um uh, other uh organizations also we talked about this on yesterday's show 
Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll discuss that as well. And then we'll let you know about what's going on at the social justice uh, conference 2021 at Hartford Memorial Baptist church, where I will be speaking on Saturday, uh, October 16th. I'll be doing a workshop there. My workshop is 10 AM classroom 306 uh social justice conference 2021 hartford M memorial baptist church here in detroit uh is taking place october 15th friday october 15th through sunday october 17th i'll be speaking that saturday and um i'll have a vendor table there also so the keynote speaker this year uh at the conference the keynote speaker is Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, who led the uh, uh, prosecutorial team uh, in the trial of Derek Chauvin in the murder of George Floyd. OK, he uh, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison will be the keynote speaker at this year's 2021 Social Justice Conference at Hartford Memorial Baptist Church uh, in Detroit, okay? All right, so uh, visit the web, uh, we have the website up here, visit the website, hmbcdetroit.org, hmbcdetroit.org for more information and purchase tickets. Tickets are $25 for the full conference, okay? And uh, the, uh, you get lunch included also. All right. On the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard or seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or a woman's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Um, I want to jump into this topic here. Uh, let's look at, so the, the, the few articles we're going to look at here. Let's look at this first one here from history.com. We posted this on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network today. What uh, What is Indigenous Peoples Day? What is Indigenous Peoples Day? So since 1991, dozens of cities several universities and a growing number of states have adopted indigenous people's day a holiday that celebrates the history and contributions of native americans not by coincidence the occasion usually falls on columbus day the second monday in october okay or replaces the holiday entirely as of 2021 uh, the holiday is observed or honored by states, including Virginia, Maine, New Mexico, uh, Vermont, Alaska, Hawaii, Oregon, Iowa, Louisiana, Michigan, Minnesota, North Carolina, Wisconsin, as well as South Dakota, which celebrates Na uh, Native, Amer Native Americans Day. Hawaii, which celebrates Discoverers Day in Alabama, which celebrates American Indian Heritage Day. Now, in 2021, President Joe Biden became the first ever president to issue a proclamation on Indigenous Peoples Day, writing, quote, today we recognize Indigenous peoples, resilience and strength, as well as the immeasurable positive impact that they have made on ev on every aspect of American society, as well as the immeasurable positive impact that they have made on every aspect of American society. So some people may ask the question, especially some people of Italian descent, why replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day? Now, activists have long argued that holidays, statues, and other memorials to Christopher Columbus sanitize his actions, which include the enslavement of Native Americans, while giving him credit for discovering a place where people already live. Okay, Columbus also enslaved African people as well, because the Spanish are taking. So, so let's back up. See, we deal with this in we deal with this in uh, uh, 
my class, uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. First thing, Columbus never came to the land that we call the United States of America. OK, Columbus never came to the land that we call the United States of America. The closest Columbus comes to this land is Cuba, which is 90 miles away. When we look at where Columbus went on his four voyages, OK, starting um, his first voyage, um, he set sail August 3rd, 1492 on the Nina Nepenta and the Santa Maria. OK, Um he goes into Haiti. He goes to what well, well, Hispaniola. He goes into uh, Cuba, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Honduras. He never comes to the land we call the United States of America. This is the this is the first thing we have to uh, get straight. OK. And the Spanish are not just enslaving Native Americans, but the Spanish are also the, the Spanish are also going to take African people into these territories that they're conquering into these islands that they're conquering and they're going to they're going to enslave african people they start taking them in about 1501 1502 okay so we we also have to understand that when they talk about is uh columbus enslaving uh native americans okay columbus was in what they were bringing in africans from africa okay into uh these Spanish territories, but also as Dr. David M. Hotep talks about in his book, The First Americans Where Africans Documented Evidence, 70% of the people that Columbus encounters on his four voyages, 70% were African people already because as well, because we were already in uh, many of those islands, okay? Because we were all, African people were already in the Americas. Well, uh, this piece right here comes from history.com. And these are some slides straight from this. Book. We have like about over 100 slides in the uh, 10 week online course that I teach close to 200. Um, we look at where he goes on his four voyages. He goes into Central America. He goes a little bit into South America, Panama, Honduras. He never comes to the land we call the United States of America. This is straight from um, history.com official website of the history channel they even tell you this okay now on the other side of the break we're going to talk about why didn't john cabot who came to north america first why 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 didn't john cabot why doesn't it, why why isn't john cabot celebrated as opposed to christopher christopher columbus we'll talk about this on the other side of the break listen to the african history network show right here on 9 10 a.m superstation future radio on michael m hotel we'll be back in a few minutes Okay, stand by, stand by. Stand by. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcasting and social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. Stand by. Stand by. Bathroom break in uh, four minutes. Back from breaking three minutes, stand by.
Okay, who still needs to register for my 10-week online course that I teach on Sundays? Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, where they didn't teach in school. We'll post a link here. We get into a lot of this information in the class. We do uh, the class on Sundays, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do the classes live, all the sessions are recorded. Stand by. Uh, and after History Network show, we deal with current events in history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Unfortunately, many people confuse what racism means. Racism is a power structure. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take us out. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. We have it all on 910 AM Superstation. 910, the Superstation, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show, right here on 910 AM Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Monday, October 11th, Indigenous Peoples Day. And we are live. Call in numbers 313 778 7600. 313 778 7600. Is the call and number if you have a question or comment. So uh once again, we're talking about Indigenous Peoples Day. And we in each year on Columbus Day, now we know Columbus landed in the Bahamas October 12th, 1492. Each year we deal with this history. Uh, I'm gonna reach out to Dr. David M. Hotel. Um, I ain't have a chance to call him today. We'll see if we can get him on the um see if we can uh get him on the show this week sometime his new book is out the first americans were africans documented events um also before we go back to this people are asking about my class so the, the course is regularly 130 dollars it's on sale 80 dollars you have access to it even after the course is over with you can go watch the full course we just posted the link here for it it's a 10-week online course it's visual um oftentimes we have guest speakers we deal with thousands of years of history and what led up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place so visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com as soon as you register you can watch the class we just did this past sunday um we deal with thousands of years of history and what led up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place we definitely deal with christopher columbus we deal with the Nile valley region of africa ancient kemet uh we do with ancient civilizations uh, and we do with the African presence in the Americas going back tens of thousands of years as well. Okay, next class is Sunday, October 17th. Uh, uh, we do the class live. All the sessions are recorded. You can watch from around the world. We'll post a link here or visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We talked about the Khoisan this past week, and we also deal with the film Black Panther because the language spoken in the film Black Panther is Isi Kosa, which is a Bantu language. You go, I go through and break down Black Panther and the 11 different African cultures that are represented in the film also. Okay, uh, Shakita, I sent you this clip. We're going to go to that clip from Dr. David M. Hotep in just a minute. I interviewed him back in February 2021. We may get that clip uh, going, but this is this clip here. We're going to play just a minute. It's from uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, Channel 5. So right before the break, we were uh, giving some background information on uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, and we were talking about Christopher Columbus. Now, some people, I see um, uh, things, people saying, forget Columbus, stuff like that, they're more colorful in their language. Christopher Columbus cannot be erased from history to understand the transatlantic slave trade you have to understand christopher columbus when, when we talk about haiti jamaica cuba okay haiti jamaica and cuba are still feeling the effects of what happened over 500 years ago being conquered by columbus and spain 
you cannot we should not erase columbus from history we should not celebrate him because columbus was a mass murderer we should not celebrate christopher columbus columbus was a mass murderer he was an enslaver okay he was a master genocide but but columbus helped lay the foundation for slavery racism capitalism the exploitation of indigenous people all of that so you have to understand you have to understand uh christopher columbus to understand slavery we don't understand none of this history that's why we're confused okay i listen to some of the i listen to some of the shows today and i'm like what the hell are these people talking about okay uh indigenous people's day applies to us as well african people were th th this was our land stolen from us african people were in the land we call the united states of america going back at least 51,700 years ago before native americans even came into existence we're so confused we don't even know indigenous people's day applies to us this is why dr D uh, dr jose pimenta bay was correct when he said and 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 he uh used to teach classes he, well he teaches classes on the history of the moors it used to be at temple university uh i'm sorry he used to be at temple university in philadelphia where my friend dr maleficetti asante is uh but he teaches uh classes on the history of the moors last time i checked it was at berea college in kentucky where dr carter g woodson got his undergraduate degree from okay so we're so confused we don't know that indigenous peoples they applies to us now that doesn't mean the transatlantic slave trade did not happen yes of course the transatlantic slave trade happened that's what the uh, all you gotta do is look at the u.s supreme court case of 1841 the amistad slave ship and those africans picked up from sierra leone of course the transatlantic slave trade happened we have to understand and, and as i talk about with dr david m hotel we have to understand the last fifty thousand years of history not the last 500 years of history you have to understand a chronology of history no wonder we so screwed up we don't even know that this was our land stolen from us and then they have an indigenous people's day we don't know that applies to us as well that doesn't mean that once again see various things various things happen at different times and you have to understand the chronology of history okay there were there were dutch that were here in the 1600s the they had a colony called new amsterdam the british are going to take over that colony and call new amsterdam new york just because they were british here in the 1600s that doesn't mean british didn't come in the 1700s also that doesn't mean you didn't have an influx in the 1700s just because africans were here 51,700 years ago just because you had a, a a presence from ancient egypt ancient kemet here as well that doesn't mean africans weren't brought here in 1619 they were brought here in 1526 the spanish once again you got to understand the spanish because the spanish were involved in the transatlantic slave trade before the english get involved see we, we don't understand our history this is why i showed this article in in um those that, that um we had class number two this past sunday so those who were in uh in class this past sunday we know we talked about 1526 when the um spanish were taking africans into the territory we call south carolina and georgia washington post has a big article about this see this is why back when the 400th year anniversary this see this is one of the problems i have with the 1619 project there's some okay there's some good information yeah, you can use some of that information in there it's flawed trying to associate the 13th amendment with mass incarceration that means you don't understand the northwest ordinance of 1787 okay and and and, and don't understand that the 13th amendment did not re-enslave african americans see that's it, that comes from not understanding history and understand and not understanding law i interviewed dr daryl scott history professor from howard university for almost two hours with that's archived at our facebook fan page the african history network and our youtube channel michael m hotel we got deep into that conversation that's a bunch of nonsense this is one of the problems with ava duvernay's documentary 13th bunch of not is no the, the 13th, 13th amendment did not re-enslave black people no there's just a total misunderstanding no there's no damn loophole there's a total misunderstanding okay and not understanding law though the 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 the, 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 the that law already applied to white people 
and it's based upon the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. And after slavery ends, they're giving the same rights that white people have. They're giving those to African-Americans. That's why you have a Civil Rights Act of 1866, which uh, allows uh, African-Americans to enter into uh, uh, legal agreements and things like this and, give, and, and it's giving them rights. And that forms the foundation of the 14th Amendment of 1868. But this article right here, this deals with the Spanish bringing Africans into the territory we call South Carolina in 1526, 93 years before 1619. This is why when the 400th year anniversary of 1619 took place, I'm like, OK, we, we can talk about 1619, August 20, 1619 in Virginia and, and 20 and odd Africans on the White Lion pirate ship because the because English pirates hijacked the San Juan Batista Portuguese slave ship. Uh, around uh, 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 that picked up 350 Africans in Angola. They hijack it around uh, Veracruz, Mexico, and they're going to take about 50 Africans uh, from the San Juan Batista and put them on two English pirate ships called the White Line and the Treasurer. And those English pirate ships come into Virginia, August 20, 1619. 20 and odd Africans are exchanged for food and water and supply. We can talk about that history. But also we need to talk about the fact that in 1619 codified slave laws didn't even exist in any of the 13 colonies. Because they in the 13 colonies, they didn't, have, they didn't have slavery at that time. They had indentured servants. They didn't have codified slave laws. The first colony to have codified slave laws is Massachusetts in 1641. They don't come to Virginia to 1661. Now, yes, you can make the argument that some people were treated like slaves before they had codified slave laws, but 1619, when you when you when you go study those those first the, when you go study those 20 and odd Africans, they're put into a form of indentured servitude and then they're gonna be uh released after about three to five years. Just a second, we lost our connection to the radio station. Let me call them back. So this is why we have to understand this chronology of history. But if we look quickly at this and then we'll go back to Columbus and we'll go to this clip here. Before 1619, there was 1526. The mystery of the first enslaved Africans and what became the United States. Shakita, this is Michael. We lost our connection. Through Skype. Okay, and Rico on the line of color. Okay, all right. Stand by. Okay, uh, just put me back on the air. Okay, all right. Sp uh, uh, okay, so we're back. We uh, we dropped a call with Skype. Um, we're in our remote studio, calling into the radio station studio. So this article here from the Washington Post. Before 1619, there was 1526. The mystery of the first enslaved Africans in what became the United States. Spanish explorers brought 100 slaves to a doomed settlement in South Carolina or Georgia in that area because the geographic boundaries that are there today weren't there in 1526. That's before any English settlements are here. Okay, this is 93 years before Virginia, before Jamestown, Virginia, before, 1600, before uh, 1619. Within weeks, the subjugated revolted, then vanished. Within weeks, the Africans rose up and overthrew their oppressors. OK, this is dealing with the Spanish. Now, this is after this is 20 years after Columbus dies. Columbus dies in, in 1506. OK, but to but to understand the transatlantic slave trade, you have to understand Christopher Columbus. You have to understand Bartolomeu de, uh, de las Casas, right? Reverend Bishop Bartolomeu de las Casas, who encourages uh, 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 the King of Spain to uh, stop enslaving Native Americans and only enslave African people because he says the Native Americans have suffered enough. Which lead, and, and then you're going to have the Asiento of uh, 1518 that King Charles V, also known as King Charles I, signs that is a license to, it, it's a license given license to slave traders and other European countries to provide Spanish colonies with enslaved Africans. And this helps to, this helps to expand the transatlantic slave trade. This is uh, 1518. This is before the English are even involved in the transatlantic slave trade because different, 
European countries are getting involved at different times. The Portuguese are the first ones involved about 1441, Anton Gonzalez. The Portuguese are the first ones involved. They dominate for the first 200 years. The Spanish are right behind the Portuguese. So you, you have to understand this chronology of history. But if we look at this article quickly here, uh, this is from September 7th, 2019. So it was the month after the 400th year anniversary, August 2016, 19. And, 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 and see, one of the biggest lies told is that African people, black people first came to this land August 2016, 19. I mean, get the hell out of here with that nonsense. This was our land stolen from us. Once, once we realize that African people we're here in this land before Native Americans and African people are the original Native Americans. All this stuff would be totally flipped upside down. All this stuff would be totally flipped upside down. One of the biggest lies told is that we first came here in 1619. Hell, the Washington Post, would tell if you do the history, African people were here in 1526. But Juan Garrido, who came from West Africa, born in West Africa in 15. In 1480, Juan Garrido comes into Florida with the Spanish conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon in 1513. Why, why isn't Juan Garrido talked about? That was, that was 1513. Why the hell isn't he talked about? So this is why a lot of this simple Simon ass nonsense I don't have time for. This is ridiculous. The country is marking the 400th year anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans to the English colony of Jamestown. The significance of their arrival cannot be overstated from the moment onward slavery existed in the colonies that became the United States in an unending chain until the passage of the 13th amendment nearly 250 years later. But those 20 and odd Africans were not the first enslaved Africans to set foot on the continent, on the continental US. That happened 93 years earlier when Spanish explorers brought a hundred slaves with them to a doomed settlement in what is now South Carolina, Georgia. Within weeks, their arrival, those enslaved Africans revolted. They, uh, then they finished, then they, then they vanished. Now you have to understand Columbus set sail August 3rd, 1492. This is late in the same year that the Spanish take back control of uh, Granada, the last stronghold of the Moors, January 2nd, 1492. Those two, those two dates are related. And you're going to have some Moors fleeing from Spain. You're going to have others who are going to be conquered and enslaved and taken into Spanish colonies and enslaved. And Christopher Columbus, he's involved in the he's in, um, involved in, in the transatlantic slave trade in the 1480s. By the early 1520s, nearly all of the indigenous people in the Spanish colony of Hispaniola. Hispaniola is the island at where Haiti is. The, the western portion of the island is Haiti. That, that was conquered by the Spanish. We're still feeling the effects over 500 years after what Columbus and Spain, and, and Spain did. Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Honduras, Panama have never recovered from what these colonizers have done. They've never recovered from what these colonizers have done. You can't remove Columbus out of history. We have to we have to center Columbus properly within history. Enslaved Africans were brought in to replace them in the backbreaking search for gold that was getting harder and harder to find. And this is after uh, Bartolomeu de las Casas told the king of Spain, stop enslaving the it's not to say the Native Americans who we call Native Americans because they've had enough just enslave African people. Now later he's gonna regret it, but it's too late after that. And Bartolomeu de las Casas traveled on voyages with Columbus. Now this is 1517, 1518. This is after Columbus died. He died in 1506. Okay, read the rest of this article. I don't have time to get into this. I want to go to this clip here. This is my friend and historian, Dr. David M. Hotel author of the book, The First Americans Were Africans, uh, Documented Evidence. This is a, a famous interview he did with WKRP in Cincinnati Channel 5 in um, 
2011, right when this book first came out. OK, maybe tomorrow we'll play uh, one of the interviews I've done with it. But this is one I could put my hands on right quick. Let's go to this clip, Shakita. Okay, we learned a lot in high in school about 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue and all that stuff. But you know what? There were Africans before Columbus, and we've got Dr. David and Hotep to tell us a history lesson that we need to know. Welcome, Dr. and Hotep. And I should say you have a PhD in ancient African history. That's correct. And that's and that's kind of unusual. Okay. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Yeah. How did you get interested in in uh, this area? Uh, it was part of my dissertation, uh, read this way, but I could not um, get very, very to a, another subject when my other subject was here. So I said, later on, I will write something about that because it's not important in my dissertation at this moment. So that's why I did the book as soon as I finished my dissertation. Wow, well, I wish you say, we have a picture of the book too. It's the first Americans were Africans, and we were talking about Dr. Ivan Van Sertima because I remember. Um, back in the 1980s, my dad took me to hear him. He came here to Cincinnati, and his book was They Came Before Columbus, and he talked about you know, how Africans were here. He had a lot of I mean, great research information, and so it was just kind of eye-opening, but we, don't, we haven't heard a lot about that recently. So tell us how you, you got involved here. I'm showing that uh, we, they actually not only came before Columbus, they came before the Indians. So you're going even farther back. I'm going farther back. At least 56,000 years old. Okay, now we've got a graphic up here about 130,000 years ago. Yeah, so well, they sailed over here. And uh, when I lecture, people say, well, wait a minute, uh, humans weren't, weren't sailing, let alone they were, weren't boating uh, 130,000 years ago. And I beg to differ. Uh, last year, the New York Times uh, quoted the BBC and uh, they wrote an article on how in Crete they have found a, a stone industry and stone tools going back to at least 130,000 years. And Crete mm -hmm. has been an island for in the middle of the Mediterranean for 5 million years. So they had to sail. And it was a continuous civilization, which means they were going back and forth. They knew how to navigate. So if they got to Crete 130,000 years ago, it's easy 70,000 years later that they could make it to the Americas at 56,000 years ago. Right. That's really... Now, how did, you, how did you even get back to this research? I mean, this is just... You know, did you start by, by reading They Came Before Columbus and then you just you expanded on that research? Yes. You see, 36 years ago, uh, Dr. Van Sertima's book came out. And this information is piled on for 36 years. So many different things, so many cutting-edge articles and, and things have been found since then. Yeah. And so and what, what, what's the reaction you get when you talk about how Africans came here even before Native Americans? People are amazed. They're shocked. They're shocked. First the shocks and then they're smiling and some proud. And then you know, and, and what about the school systems? Because you know, have we gotten this information to the to the educational system? Not yet. The only book has only been out for a month, month and a half. And what kind of what kind of feedback are you getting though when you go around and talk about this? I mean, I am assuming you're doing lectures around the country. Yeah, well I always bring my, my peer review articles. Okay. Because my thesis would be the same as my title, the first American for Africa. It's backed up by seven, since the eight um, peer-reviewed journal articles, which is the height of academia. Wow. And so you've got credibility. I mean, people can see this research. What do you think? Do you think this is going to change history at all? Well, for, for hundreds of years in Europe, uh, people thought that the, the world was flat. It took a while for them to be able to say the world was round in order to, to, to go out there and, and navigate and see it was indeed round. So it's going to take a little while for but it will happen. Well, and tell us a little bit about these Africans who, who came before the Indians, before Columbus. Okay, uh, they came here, and uh, they were first, uh, they came to Sierra, uh, to, uh, to uh, Pedro Furida, which is northeastern Brazil. And you'll okay. see that that's the closest point uh, from Africa to South America. And by Canoe, a, uh, a fellow uh, a navigator uh, who was a doctor, wanted to prove that it could be done just in a canoe. And he set out in a canoe uh, with a supply ship, but it did not touch him. He had a canoe with no oars, no um, um, no paddle, no sail, nothing. He just sat there, and the currents took him straight from Africa to here. You know really? about people, if you throw a bottle in, in the uh, water, yeah. with a note, it'll come over. There right. are rivers in the ocean, currents. And it took him 52 days only. So you put a large sail on that vessel. 
Wow. And you get here in less than a month. So it's definitely possible. We know that. It's physically possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so what part of, of Africa were the Africans from who, who, who came to Brazil? Well, the DNA, uh, the genome, the uh, genome project uh, found that the earliest ones, uh, the, the ones that they found in Tierra del Fuego, the very tip of, of South America, in uh, 1874, 1876, uh, were the short Africans, the Khoisan, who spoke with clicks like, like that. The God must be crazy that it's uh, a movie on Yeah, that. I remember that, yeah. yeah. So they have About the, the Coca-Cola bottle yeah. or selling, yeah. Yeah, they have the oldest DNA and the oldest language on the planet, and they were all over. Oh, wow. All over all the America. Now, now, Asia. Well, have they done any DNA tests in Brazil to see that? Yes, they have. The Genome Project went all around the world. There are 100,000 people participating. Wow. Taking DNA swaps. And so, so first we know that it's possible to get over here by, by canoe, and second of all, the DNA from that group of Africans is yes. in Brazil. The most important thing, not, not to forget, to, to ask me, well, I, I will tell you that, where do the Native Americans come from? Well, we've always been taught that they came across the Bering Straits from Asia. This is true. But they did not come until 3000 BC. There is no evidence of them coming before 3000 BC. So for 53,000 years, there were nothing but Africans in North Central South America. Wow. And they come over 3000 BC. Those two groups, the Africans and the Mongolians, get together, the Asians, get together, and their children are the Native Americans. Wow. This is why the Native Americans do not look Chinese. They are a little different than Chinese. Right. Oh, that's, you know what? I mean, we need to, we need to learn. It makes a lot of sense, yes. Dr. Imhotep, and we need to learn our history. Yes. So I think it's fantastic that you've written this book, and I know people are wondering how do they get the first Americans for Africans, documented evidence. I love this. And it's by Dr. David Imhotep. How do we get this book? I have a phone. Amazon.com. Okay, Amazon.com. Yes. Okay. Well, that's easy. Amazon.com. Amazon. And Jeff is saying, give us that phone number. Two All right. Pause, pause it right there, Shakita. Five four zero seven. Pause it right there. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, Amazon. His new book is at Amazon.com. The first Americans were Africans revisited or revised because uh, that's his new book. His first book, the first Americans were Africans, documented evidence is out of print. So my copy, I don't even take out of the house. Okay, this is my copy right here. I don't even take this out the house. It's out of print, and he actually autographed it for me. He actually autographed it for me. He and I, we've done two lectures together. So um, we had him on the show actually last October when we started doing this show six days a week. We had him. He was my first guest. It was actually on Columbus Day. I think it was just so it had to be October 12th. Um, so we're going to try to get him back on. Uh, I need to call him. Let's go to the phone lines quickly. Uh, let's go to I think it's Rico. Uh, Rico line one. Rico, thanks for holding. Welcome to the African History Network show. Go ahead quickly with your question or comment. Uh, I like to say I actually agree with David Chappelle about being trans school community because the people is just so awesome. Man, they, they got these weird people. Not even weird. Your, your voice is muffled, Rico. Uh, Rico, Rico, your voice is muffled. I can't, I can't understand what you're saying. Your voice, is, Shakita, get his, get his audio straight yeah. for me. Get his audio straight for me. I can't understand what he's saying. His voice is muffled. Okay, we'll come back to him in just a second. All right. Um, let's see let's look at this here now you can the 10 week online course that i teach because those were some slides from my class actually and some of this information we got into uh this past sunday uh visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com we also just posted uh, we posted the link here uh ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade what they didn't teach you in school we deal with thousands of years of history. We deal with the ancient African presence in the Americas going back uh, over 50,000 years. And there's new evidence that pushes that back to 250,000 years ago in Mexico. OK, uh, so you go to our website, click right here, register here, it takes you to the next page. Just click on uh, enroll. Uh, class is regularly $130 on sale, $80. As soon as you register, you can start watching. And even after the class is over with next year you want to go back and watch the full 10 weeks that's fine you can do that we do powerpoint presentation have book references articles video clips guest speakers so it's a fantastic class let's go back to rico here let's see if we get his audio straight rico go ahead you're talking about dave Chappelle. go ahead uh with what you were saying do we have rico okay 
Yeah, okay, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. You're on the Hello? air. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm talking about trans people, man. They're not even real people, man. They share teams. They sit back and watch you from whatever in there, man, and they take up their life over being like more, uh, more, more what you call to be than what they are. Okay. And you can't communicate commun- with these people, man. These people that you can to you and they run up on you and they kind of do all this stuff to you, man, just pray. Okay. Man, thanks for calling, Rico. Thanks for calling, Rico. Thanks. 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 All right, thanks. Thanks for calling. Th- th- thanks for calling, Rico. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Keep keep listening. All right, let's continue. All right, so um, let's see here. If we go back, I wanted to, lastly, I want to look at this piece here from, um, this is, so there are a number of articles I saw today. There's one in particular I want to look at. This is Indigenous People's Day 2021, What You Need to Know, Democrat and Chronicle, uh, democratandchronicle.com. This is a news uh, public, the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle uh, newspaper. This piece here has some good information. And my friend Jamon Jordan posted some good information. Historian Jamon Jordan posted some good information today also uh, dealing with John Cabot, okay? So if we go here and look at, so right here, they talk about Batalemi de las Casas, uh, the Spanish priest. And, and de las Casas is crucial to the spread of the transatlantic slave trade, okay? Batalemi de las Casas is crucial uh, to the spread of the transatlantic slave trade. And he travels with Columbus uh, on voyages. Uh, let's see here. This I want to go to. Uh, Indigenous Peoples Day 2021. Let's go to this one here. Uh, let's see here. Just a second. I want to go to this is the one I want right here. Okay. So they talk about um, did Columbus come to this land or something to that effect? Okay. I think this is it right here. Let's close that out and pull up. Uh, this is the one I want right here. Let's see if we can get the screen share going with this one here. But they talk about um, did uh, Columbus ever come to this land? Did Columbus ever set foot in North America? Okay, that's the question. And let's see, those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching on our YouTube channel, The African History Network, The African History Network, and uh, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P on YouTube, because uh, we're out of time here. We'll, we'll talk about this some more tomorrow's show. But uh, long story short, did Columbus ever set foot in North America? No, he did not. They're telling you this. Um, we'll continue this uh, tomorrow. Those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. Right now, it's correct your own behavior. It's not over till we win Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. V- visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Register for my 10-week online course. And then also, uh, I'll be at uh, Hartford Memorial Baptist Church Saturday, October 16th. Uh, my workshop is 10 a.m. for the Social Justice Conference 2021. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Did did Columbus ever set foot in North America? No, he did not. Jack Weatherford, an anthropologist. Jack Weatherford, an anthropologist, wrote in an article for the Baltimore Evening Sun. Hold on. Wrote in an article for the Baltimore Evening Sun. Uh, quote, Columbus voyage has even less meaning for North Americans than for South Americans because Columbus never set foot on our continent, nor did he open it to European trade. Okay, Columbus never came here to the land that we call the United States of America, the contiguous U.S., the Spanish come here because Juan Ponce de Leon comes into Florida. It was Juan Ponce de Leon that gave Florida its name. Okay. Florida is in reference to flowers. 
the name Florida is in reference to flowers. It was Juan Ponce de Leon, the Spanish conquistador, that gave Florida its name. Quote, Scandinavian Vikings, Scandinavian Vikings already had uh, settlements here in the 11th century. And British fishermen probably fished the shores of Canada, of Canada for decades before Columbus. Uh, Jack Weatherford said, OK, uh, the first European explorer to thoroughly document his visit to North America was the uh, Italian explorer Giovanni Caboto, Gio Giovanni Cabo Caboto, Italian explorer who sailed for England's King Henry the Seventh, King Henry the Seventh, and became known by his anglicized name, John Cabot. Became Came known by his anglicized name, John Cabot. Now, Giovanni Caboto arrived in 1497 and claimed North America for the English sovereign while Columbus was still searching for, for India in the Caribbean. Because Columbus is, find, is trying to find a way westward uh, to, to get to the east, okay? um he's trying to find a way westward to get to the east he's trying to he's trying to get to asia um he wants to uh, uh get get to the silk and the spices things like this uh gold what have you so he's trying to uh go west to eventually get east now after three voyages to america and more than a decade of study Columbus still believed that Cuba was part of the continent of Asia. South America was only an island and the coast of Central America was close to the Ganges River. Now, if, uh, uh, let me see here. Okay, so they talk about John Cabot. Now, John Cabot is not celebrated because after the american revolution there was an attempt to uh a lot of things that had to do with the british there was an attempt of the u.s to distance itself from a lot of those things the there's a push by italian immigrants to celebrate columbus okay because he was italian even though he was he conquered on behalf of spain he was italian if we go back to uh okay let's look at this when was the first columbus day though it wasn't rec though it wasn't recognized as a federal holiday until 1971 italian immigrants italian immigrants had celebrated columbus day for centuries commemorating the 300th uh anniversary of his arrival to the caribbean on October 12th, 1792, October 12th, 1792, Mariano, um, let's see, Ma Mariano A. Luca of Buffalo led the campaign for the national holiday. Mariano A. Luca led the campaign for the national holiday. Colorado was the first state to formally recognize Columbus Day, doing so in 1905. All right. Now, if we look at. If it never made it to North America. If he never made it to North America, why is Columbus celebrated? If he never made it to North America, why is Columbus celebrated? During large waves of Italian immigration between 1880 and the start of World War I, which started in 1914, the U.S. gets involved in World War I in 1917, but it, World War I starts in 1914. Newly arrived Italians faced ethnic and religious discriminations. Newly arrived Italians faced ethnic and religious discriminations. Yeah, they were they were at the they were at the bottom with the with uh, the Greeks. The Irish were below them. 
but yeah, they were uh, the Italians and the, and the, the Italians and the uh, Greeks and the Irish. They're going to face a lot of discrimination, not as much as African Americans, of course. So so did Chinese as well. Chinese Exclusion Act of about 1917. Uh, different other groups absolutely did face discrimination, and depending upon which area of the country it was, it could be it could be more intense than other areas. The first anti-drug laws in this country are basically the anti-opium laws going back to about 1845 in california that was directed towards um uh chinese men who were working on the railroads because there was a fear that these uh chinese men would seduce white women uh, if, uh if white women were high on uh opium uh, or they would they try to rape white women, what have you. So the first uh, anti-drug laws or the anti-opium laws directed towards a uh, Chinese man. In New Orleans in 1891, 11 Sicilian immigrants were lynched. In New Orleans in 1891, 11 Sicilian immigrants were lynched. A year later, President Benjamin Harrison became the first president to call for a national observance of Columbus Day. Okay, this is uh, 1892. This would be the four, uh, 400th, uh, 400th year anniversary of Columbus um, setting sail on his first of four voyages. So a year later, which would be 1892, President Benjamin Harrison became the first president to call for a national observance of Columbus Day in honor of the 400th anniversary of Columbus arrival, NPR reported. Now, Italian Americans, Italian Americans viewed celebrations of Columbus as a way to become accepted into mainstream american culture and throughout the country italian americans viewed celebrations of columbus as a way to become accepted into mainstream american culture and throughout the country they began to advocate for uh reckon columbus's rec columbus recognition citing the controversy around columbus akron uh, uh, citing the con uh, controversy around Columbus, Akron, Ohio recognizes Italian American Heritage and Culture Day instead. Italian American Heritage and Culture Day instead. Now, uh, okay, and the first Columbus Day was um, Colorado was the first state to formally recognize Columbus Day, doing so in 1905. OK. Um, in Rochester, uh, Rochester, New York, uh, Rochester has recognized the holiday of Indigenous Peoples Day uh, going back to 2018 when Mayor Lovely Warren uh, officially proclaimed the day as Indigenous Peoples Day. OK, so read this here. This is from the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. Uh, newspaper. Check out this article here. Indigenous Peoples Day 2021, what you need to know. Indigenous, Indigenous Peoples Day 2021, what you need to know. Okay, so there, there are a lot of good articles that sh uh, sh give more background information, shed more light on this. None of them I've seen have talked about the African presence in this country going back tens of thousands of years ago, going back before Native Americans were here, going back before slavery. None of them that I've seen have talked about that. That's problematic. And unfortunately, I was listening to Reverend Al Sharpton show the day he don't even know this stuff. So uh, this is this is like really, really problematic. Uh, I want to go back to this first one here. This is from... Um, History.com, official website of the History Channel. Then we're going to uh, give an update on um, Dave Chappelle. What is Indigenous Peoples Day? Okay. 
And we posted this article today on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. What is Indigenous Peoples Day? So the uh, article, it goes back. So it talks about the proclamation from Joe Biden. It's probably it's probably a lot of Donald Trump supporters who are upset about that, too. Uh, the proclamation that declaring the day Indigenous Peoples Day. So then they ask the question, why replace um, where is that? Why replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day? Activists have long argued that holidays, statues and other memorials to Columbus to Columbus sanitize his actions, which include the enslavement of Native Americans while giving him credit for discovering a place where people already live. He enslaved African people, too. This is the, the, the Spanish take, take Africans into those into those islands, Haiti, Jamaica, all that. Well, it was it's before it was called Haiti. Is is um you uh you have the island of Hispaniola, that's going to be conquered by the Spanish in uh Jamaica is fourteen ninety four. That's going to be conquered by the Spanish in about fourteen ninety two. Okay, that's um. The first of uh, Columbus's four voyages. So, this is all that. That's all the result of the Spanish. And as I said at the beginning of the show, Cuba, Jamaica, and Haiti. And we we've heard them all in the news in the past few months. They've never recovered from what happened a little over five hundred years ago. They never recover. They have not recovered from that. The other thing is that Columbus was using nautical instruments that was based upon technology that the Moors introduced into Europe. This is why I say I wish we had never taught them all this stuff. When you study history of the Moors, all that stuff that we taught them came back to kick us in the behind. He's using nautical instruments like the uh, like the astrolabe is one of them. It's based upon nautical instruments that the Moors introduced into Europe. The Moors are introducing almanacs, spherical globes, nautical instruments, things like this. I heard one person calling Reverend Al Sharpton show today and said the 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 Europeans didn't know what was in the, the what did he say the Europeans didn't know what was in those other lands or didn't know what was here things like this the more to introduce an almanacs in the europe showing what's the the, the the africans had already circumnavigated the globe they're intro they're, they're 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 taking in almanacs into europe they already know what's here african people have already had already circumnavigated the globe we're introducing spherical globes we're introducing nautical instruments into europe All right, let's see here. Columbus Day became federal holiday. Oh, sorry. Columbus Day is not just a holiday. It represents the violent history of colonization in the Western Hemisphere, said Leo Killsback, a professor of American Indian Studies at Arizona State University. Columbus Day became a federal holiday in 1937, in part because of efforts by Roman Catholic Italian Americans. OK, in part by efforts from Roman Catholic Italian Americans during the late 19th and early 20th century, members of the stigmatized ethnic and religious groups successfully campaigned to establish a uh, Columbus Day in order to uh, place Catholic Italians like Christopher Columbus into American history. All right successfully campaigned to establish Columbus Day in order to place Catholic Italians like Christopher Columbus into American history. In doing so, they edged out people of Anglo-Saxon descent who wanted a federal holiday honoring Leif Erikson as the first European to reach the Americas. But decades later, the question of...
which European got here first is beside the point. Indigenous Peoples Day represents a much more honest and fair representation of American values, writes Killsback, who is a citizen of the Northern Cheyenne Nation of Southeastern Montana. Uh, okay, so read the rest of this here. And uh, Leif Erickson, the Vikings, yeah, Leif, uh, Leif Erickson actually came here uh, before the, the Spanish come here. And let's see, let's try to pull this up here. Okay, if we look at this quickly here from history.com, because all, all this is all this history is important, regardless of um regardless of which Europeans it is, all, all this history is important. Well, let's go to I want Leif Erickson. Just a second. Let's look at this article here on Leif Erickson. Son of uh, Eric the Red. So this is from History.com, official website of the History Channel. Let me close some of these tabs out. Okay, Leif Erickson was the son. Leif Erickson was the son of Eric the Red, founder of the first European settlement on what is now called Greenland founder of the uh, uh, first European settlement on what is now called Greenland, Greenland, around 1000 AD, okay, Le as Leif Erikson. Leif Erikson sailed to Norway where King Olaf the first converted him to Christianity. According to one school of thought, Leif Erikson sailed off course on his way back to Greenland and landed on the North American continent where he explored a region called Vinland, where he explored a region called Vinland. He may have also sought out Vinland based on stories of an earlier voyage by an Icelandic uh, trader. After spending the winter in Vinland, Leif Erikson sailed back to uh, Greenland and never returned to North American shores. He is generally believed to be the first European to reach the North American continent nearly four centuries before Christopher Columbus arrived in 1492. So Christopher Columbus never comes to the, the land we call the United States of America, but the Caribbean is classified as North America. Okay, the Caribbean is classified as North America. Now, at one point, the Caribbean was not considered North America, but the Caribbean, because I, I researched this a few years ago, the Caribbean is classified as North America. Okay, so I'm very careful in how I, I, I express that. Um, Columbus never comes to the land we call the United States of America, but if you consider the Caribbean part of North America, he did come there, but this contiguous United States and contiguous means connected, the contiguous United States. So we know Alaska and Hawaii are not part of the contiguous United States. Okay, they're separate from this landmass. Columbus never comes to this landmass that we call the United States of America. Um. Okay, so read this here on uh, Leif Erikson also. So you're talking about 1000 AD. Okay, now if we look at this piece here from... Um, look at this piece here from the griot.com this is something i talk about in my class uh black explorers we should celebrate 
instead of Columbus. Black explorers we should celebrate instead of Columbus. Uh, let's look at this here. Pull this up. Black explorers, we should celebrate instead of Columbus. This is from the griot.com. This is from a few years ago. Okay, uh, yeah, this is from 2015. So they talk about Abubakar II, they talk about um, Juan Garrido, Estaba Nico, but the Nino brothers are very important, P Pedro Alonso Nino. And they talk about Pedro Alonso Nino on um, Good Times. There's an episode where uh, Michael made some comments about George Washington that, that were true. He said George Washington was a slave owner or something like that. He made some comments that were true in school and get suspended from school. And James is going to give him a spanking and um, he starts dropping some black history, some African history. And he talks about uh, Pedro Alonso Nino who is navigating uh, one of Columbus's ships. Okay, let's go to this here. Black explorers we should celebrate instead of Columbus. Let me just say, let me close out some of these tabs. The Nino brothers, Pedro Alonso, also, Paralonzo, Nino, Francisco, and Juan, described as El Negro, described as El Negro, navigator and explorer, Pedro Alonzo Nino, son of a white Spaniard and enslaved African woman, has long been acknowledged for accompanying Columbus on his first expedition to the Americas in 1492 as the pilot of the Santa Maria. Although Pedro is one of the most well-known of Columbus's crew, he was not alone. His brothers Francisco and Juan, Juan's the oldest, Francisco's the youngest, were also part of Columbus's voyages. In their home of uh, Magur, Magur, uh, Spain, they were prominent sailors with experience on Atlantic voyages. Reportedly, Pedro Alonso Nino even sailed the West African coast during the first Columbus, uh, during the first Columbus voyage, Juan helmed La Nina during the first Columbus voyage Juan held La Nina, which he also owned. Okay, Juan Juan owned La, the 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 ship, the three ships, the 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 uh, uh, Santa Maria, the Nina, and the Pinta. Okay, Juan owned Juan helmed the Nina, La Nina. Francisco was most likely a sailor of on La Nina also. This keeps jumping around. The brothers also took part in Columbus's second voyage in which it is well documented that Pedro was with Columbus when he discovered Trinidad. In fact, sons of Pedro and Juan are believed to have participated in Columbus uh, voyages as well. 
Enterprise and Pedro set out on his own expedition in search of riches in the Americas, uh, in the Americas, Columbus had not ventured through in the in in search of riches in the Americas that Columbus had not ventured through. Although he successfully returned to Spain, he was accused of cheating the king of 20 percent of the treasure and arrested. He died. Uh, he died in prison before he could uh, go to trial. Francisco died in Honduras. It is not widely known where Juan died. Then we then we have Juan Garrido. Now I'll talk about Juan Garrido because Juan Garrido was he's born in West Africa in 1980. Even even Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr. talks about Juan Garrido. Okay, Juan Garrido was born in West Africa in 1480, and he's enslaved in Portugal. Um, around 1502, 1503, he lands in, in Santo Domingo. Later, Juan Garrido was elevated to the status of conquistador and was with Juan Ponce de Leon during his search for the Fountain of Youth in Florida in 1513. Juan Garrido is probably the first African we know of by name who came to the land we call the United States of America. Juan Garrido was also part of the Hernan Cortez led invasion in Mexico in 1519, which resulted in the conquest of the Aztecs. Now, Juan, I, I'm not saying Juan Garrido was good. I'm just saying he was African because he's with the Spanish conquistador. So he wasn't good. Uh, later, he participated in expeditions in um, Micahocan, uh Mexico in the 1520s and traveled to islands around san juan and cuba as well juan garrido who married and fathered three children settled in mexico city to secure that land based on his service should have uh, automatically been his he provided testimony of his exploits of his 30 years as a conquistador without pay in 1538 today he is also credited with harvesting the first commercial wheat crop in the americas okay so you can read this here Black explorers we should celebrate instead of Columbus, or at least talk about. Now, okay, we've got that. That New York Times has a good article on, uh, let's see, what is this people? This is People's Day. This is USA Today. This is People's Day. But I can't remember. Today's okay. Thought about that. This is the proclamation at whitehouse.gov. Read this. And there's a lot of executive orders here also because uh, there's a lot of executive orders that Biden has done and a lot of people don't know about them either. Going back to the day he was inaugurated, there's 10 executive orders the day he was inaugurated that he did. A proclamation on Indigenous Peoples Day 2021. This was signed uh, October 8th, 2021. OK, so um, read this also. All right. So we already talked a little bit about that. That's at whitehouse.gov. All the proc proclamations, executive orders, all the fact sheets on different plans, the American Families Plan, the infrastructure bill, all that. That's at whitehouse.gov. OK. If you like this type of information, you can register for the, uh, I teach two 10 week online courses from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power, 1865 to 1968. We do this one on Saturdays from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power, 1865 to 1968. This one picks up where understanding the transatlantic slave trade leaves off. We do this Saturdays, 12 noon to 2 PM um just click right here on register here it takes you to the next page click on enroll we focus on what led up to the trans what led up to the civil war starting and then we go from so we start with the louisiana purchase of 1803 we go through history chronologically to see what leads to the civil war uh and then we uh, look at uh 1865 to 1877 reconstruction era we look at jim crow 
uh, era and the laws and policies put in place to reverse the gains that African-Americans were making and also the policies put in place and changing the state constitutions to take back control of the uh, state governments. Also, Mississippi, Alabama, Missouri, uh, Alabama, South Carolina, things like this. Uh, we look at World War One, World War Two, Great Migration, uh, Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement. OK, just click on register here and uh, takes to the next page. Click on enroll. You can register for that class. As soon as you register, you can uh, watch the class we just did this past um, weekend. OK, that is. From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. So we do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, everything. Um, and then the first class that I teach is Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And that one we deal with thousands of years of history. We do with the African presence in America is dating back over 50,000 years ago. Uh, this one here, we do this on Sundays, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As soon as you register, you watch the class we just did this past Sunday. This is on sale $80, regularly $130. Uh, even after the 10 week online course is over with, you still uh, have access to the full class. You can still go back and watch it because all the sessions will be archived. We do the sessions live. You can see me in class, I can't see you. Um, we have a live text chat so you can ask questions also. Uh, so we'll post this link here also. Okay. All right. Let's shift gears here and talk about um, um, we'll talk about Dave Chappelle. Give an update on Dave Chappelle. We talked about uh, Dave Chappelle on our Sunday show. A lot of people are talking about the sun uh, our Sunday show. So go back and watch that. Uh, also, so Netflix has come out in support of Dave Chappelle, okay, and backlash uh, that he's getting from uh, L uh, LGBT co uh, community, and you have uh, Glad, and you have um, uh, some other uh, organizations calling for uh, his special to be pulled, uh, the closure to be pulled. Uh, from Netflix. Netflix has come out and said that they're not going to pull it. Okay. They support Dave Chappelle. We played the clip from, uh, so I spoke to David Johns um, on Friday when I was on Roller Martin and Filter. David Johns is the executive director of the National Black Justice Coalition. That's one of the organizations calling for um, his special to be pulled also. Okay. Now, if we look at this piece, we're going to look at this piece here from the uh, CNN has a good article about this. There's also uh, three Netflix employees that have been suspended, but they're not suspended surrounding. Uh, they're not suspended surrounding the closer or their opposition to uh, the closer to uh, Dave Chappelle's uh, Netflix special. OK, so there's some confusion around that as well. All right, let's look at this here. Um, we look at this piece here from CNN. Uh, let me pull this up here. Just a second. Got two. I thought I already had it up. I guess I don't. Uh, Netflix standing by Dave Chappelle and the closer. Netflix standing by Dave Chappelle and the closer. So Netflix is defending Dave Chappelle. Netflix is defending Dave Chappelle's uh, new comedy special after it has been criticized as transphobic by some LGBT community uh, advocates, artists, and employees. Now, most of the, most of the criticism I've heard, they ain't, they're not saying it should be pulled for him using the N-word. 
I just, I just find it, I just find it interesting. I just find that you can say whatever you want to about us and dehumanize us. Nobody calls for those things to be taken down. But you say something about the LGBT community, then then they come out out of woodwork and they want stuff taken down and all this stuff. Okay, if we look at this here. All right, so Netflix is defending Dave Chappelle's comedy uh, special after it's been criticized. Uh, Chappelle, uh, Chappelle's special, The Closer, which debuted, um, it was uh, Tuesday, October 5th, I think it was, on Netflix, includes several minutes of jokes about uh, transgender people. Uh, the comedian uh, says in the special, he is Team Turf, referencing the term for trans exclusionary radical feminists uh so he talks about gender and every human comes uh passes through the legs of a woman on earth things like this well what about a c-section but okay whatever um he taught his he talks about backlash he received after making jokes about caitlin jenner and other transgendered people in previous specials he criticizes cancel culture around author J.K. Rowling and references his friendship with Daphne, uh, Daphne Dorman, a transgender woman and a fellow comedian who opened for him at one of his San Francisco shows. Uh, uh, Daphne uh, Dorman died by suicide in 2019, which Dave Chappelle addresses in The Closer. Now, in an October 8th email, to employees from Netflix. Uh, Co-CEO Ted Sarandos and uh, obtained by The Verge and Variety uh, publications, uh, news outlets, entertainment outlets. The executive defended the special. Co-CEO of Netflix, Ted Sarandos defended the special, okay? He said, um, Let's go back to this here. Hold on. All right, just a second here. Okay, so one of the things that's interesting here is that they he said that they know they're going to have employees that may disagree, and they're free to disagree. So they can tweet. And go on social media and disagree with it that's fine quote several of you have asked where we draw the line on hate several of you have asked where we draw the line on hate we don't allow titles on netflix that are designed to incite hate or violence and we don't believe the closer crosses that line i recognize however that distinguishing between commentary and harm is hard i recognize however that distinguishing distinguishing between commentary and harm is hard especially with stand-up comedy which exists to push boundaries some people find the art of stand-up to be mean to be mean-spirited but our members enjoy it the members of netflix subscribers our members enjoy it and it's an important part of our content offering. Now, at the time of this article here that came out Monday, October 11th, 2021, CNN has not independently verified the email. Now, Netflix has suspended three employees for uh, attending a virtual meeting of directors and vice presidents last week without notifying the meeting organizer in advance, according to a source with knowledge of the matter. One of the suspended employees is Tara, Tara Field, T-E-R-R-A, Tara Field, who is a senior software engineer who identifies as queer and trans. And Tara Field had publicly criticized the closure on Twitter last week. Her suspension, however, is due to her attendance at the meeting and not her tweets, okay, according to the source. Her suspension 
is because of attending attendance of the meeting not because of her tweets as well as the the uh, other two employees it was it was suspended because of their attendance at the meeting quote it is absolutely untrue to say that we have suspended any employees for tweeting about this show our employees are encouraged to disagree openly and we support their right to do so end quote a netflix post spokesperson told cnn when asked about the suspensions now tara field tweeted last week that Dave Chappelle's special ridiculed the existence of trans people she tweeted quote promoting turf ideology uh directly harms trans people it is not some neutral act this is not an argument with two sides it is an argument with trans people who want to be alive and people who don't want us it, it, it is an argument with trans people who want to be alive and people who don't want us to be now tara field ended her thread with the names of 37 transgendered uh, non-conforming people who've been killed throughout 2021 glad the organization glad the lgbt uh, uh media advocacy organization has also condemned comments made in the closer and on monday october 11th issued a statement in response to news of the suspensions in the email from uh ted sarandos co-ceo of netflix glad in their statement said quote netflix has a policy that content designed to incite hate or violence is not allowed on the platform but we all know that anti-lgbtq content does exactly that now they don't come out and talk about content that calls us the n-word and bees and dehumanizes african American stuff like that they don't come out and i haven't seen them come out and say you should pull that while netflix is home to groundbreaking lgbt um stories now is the time for netflix execs to listen to the lgbt community lgbt employees in industry leaders and audiences and commit to living up to their own standards end quote the organization tweeted cnn at the time of this article has reached out to representatives of dave chappelle in the closer in dave chappelle's stand-up special for netflix the closer chappelle says the special will be the last time he will publicly comment on trans people or issues so netflix stands behind dave chappelle okay and uh you'll probably hear some more about this watch the show we did uh sunday we had a really good show sunday we go through and break a lot of this stuff down all right let's see here so you know like i said before like i said on sunday show i just find it interesting we talked about the baby we cleared up some misinformation uh because the baby's case was dismissed it appears that was a case of self-defense uh, his uh gun charge it, he was that case was dismissed so um i know they Chappelle talked about it briefly that the baby shot and killed somebody at a walmart but when you go we looked at the details of that case on yesterday's show that case was dismissed and the gun charges were dismissed against the baby. It appears that was a situation of self-defense. Um, he was defending himself against somebody who it appears, apparently from the details, it appears somebody was trying to kill him or at least shoot him, harm him. Um, let's see here. Okay. So we've got that. All right, if you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. We're here six days a week, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time, and sometimes over. We go over. 
Uh, we're on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF, uh, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight. And then Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We broadcast here also on our social media platforms. Uh, this is our official cash app account, dollar sign, the AHN show, S-H-O-W. When you go to it, it shows my, it says Michael and shows my picture there. These other ones are fake African history network cash app accounts. Those are not me. So the stuff says keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting. Um, I will be at the, the social justice conference is coming up Friday, October 15th through uh, Sunday, October 17th at hartford memorial baptist church uh so i will be there that saturday uh their keynote speaker on saturday will be keith ellison who is the attorney general state's attorney general for minnesota and he led the prosecutorial team that prosecuted derek chauvin for the murder of george floyd okay so they have uh, a day of uh, workshops. Uh, there's a keynote speaker. There's a panel discussion keynote speaker. My workshop is at 10 a.m. I'll be in classroom 306. Classroom 306. The conference is $25 per person. Um, this is some information here. Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, the headline 2021 Hartford Social Justice Conference here in Detroit okay and uh visit their web to see and for more information let's see the social justice conference is an annual uh heart is an annual event at hartford memorial baptist church and attracts some of the most prominent speakers in the count in the county i think they meant to say country a few years ago the rye from cnn was the keynote speaker so i got to meet angela rye because i was i was there and i was i was doing a workshop I, I, i'm usually one of the workshop presenters each year sister mary grant uh invites me to be a workshop presenter i'll have a vendor booth there also on saturday so we'll have my dvd lectures and uh you can purchase that and we'll register uh, we'll register people for online courses also uh register at the door Donation is $25. For more information, visit the website, uh, HMBDC, HMBCDetroit.org, HMBCDetroit.org, or call 313-861-1285, 313-861-1285, okay? But the website is here, HMBCDetroit.org. You can register at the door. When you register, they ask you like which workshops you want. So you can let them know that you want Michael M. Hotep's workshop. I'm in classroom 306. My workshop is at 10 a.m. Uh, my workshop is going to be on uh, th th this year's theme is dealing with the black church and like social justice, things like this. So my workshop is on uh, black liberation theology as a tool to fight against white supremacy and some of the history of black liberation theology movements a significant uh african-american figures who've used black liberation theology to um uh, organize and fight for freedom going back during slavery uh various forms of black liberation theology slavery civil rights movement after reconstruction all of that so we'll deal with some of that history okay uh, that's 10 a.m uh saturday october 16th all right, look, we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct for own behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow.